So in this video, I want to show you how I use both Camel 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 and Keepa while I am sourcing for profitable inventory for my Amazon business. Now, the things I'm going to show you can be used also while doing retail arbitrage on a smartphone, but I'm going to show you what I'm doing while doing online arbitrage on my laptop computer. I'm going to record my screen, show you me looking at Amazon.com, what my thought process is, and why I decide to buy something and why I decide to pass on something. I'm using the Google Chrome browser while I'm doing my online arbitrage because I can install the Camel extension and the Keepa extension so I can have quick and easy access to both Camel, Camel, Camel and Keepa while I'm doing online arbitrage. If you haven't had a chance to see the video walkthroughs of how to understand Camel, Camel, Camel or Keepa, be sure you watch those videos because they might make this video make even more sense when you understand how both Camel, Camel, Camel and Keepa work. The thing is, is when I'm actually doing the sourcing uh, in real life, uh, I'm able to look at these graphs in about 20 seconds and make a decision. Now obviously when we're watching this video, I'm going to be thinking out loud, so it's going to be taking a lot longer than 20 seconds. But the longer you practice with using both Camel, Camel, Camel and Keepa, the faster you're going to get at being able to make those split second decisions when you're sourcing, spend about 20 seconds a, pro a product to be able to make the decision, yes it's a buy, no it's a pass and be able to make smart sourcing decisions. So now let's transition over to my laptop. I will show you me looking and doing some online arbitrage on my laptop. Let's say that you were outsourcing for this item and came across it and you're like, oh, I can get this for $10 and oh, it's selling on Amazon for $29. And you catch yourself because you're like, wait a minute, it's not necessarily selling for $29, it's just priced at $29. Let me look at Camel and Keepa to make sure it really is selling for that price. So I'm using the Google Chrome browser because I've got the extensions in my computer all set up, both Camel and Keepa with their extensions. So I can just scroll down because Keepa already is in here. And I can see that on this item, oh, I see that Amazon is in stock. Amazon is selling this item. They have it priced for $42, and it, they've just lowered their price to $34. $34. Now, usually, I when I'm outsourcing, and if I see that Amazon is in stock on this on an item, I usually don't try to compete with Amazon. You know, I've got a whole uh, module about the times when I do compete with Amazon. Usually, I don't, but there are times where you might want to. So, for me, I would come into this and see that Amazon is selling this. Now, they're selling it at $42 or $34, but the regular, the lowest marketplace new price is $19.99, and so I would have to decide whether or not I would want to sell, you know, if I'm, if I'm trying to sell um, a $10 item and sell it on Amazon for $19.99, after fees I'm probably only going to make about $2, maybe $3 if I'm selling an FBA, so it's not something that I would want to do. All right, let's take a look at this item. Houdini aerating poor silver. Now, other than this making me a little thirsty right now, um, imagine you're outsourcing this item and you can buy it for $5. You can buy it for $5. It's priced at $17.99 right now. We can scroll down and look at the um, the rank. Oh, it's at 117565 in Home and Kitchen. I look at my sales rank chart and it shows me that that's well within the top 1% and I'm like oh my gosh I'm excited this item is in the top 1% I'm gonna buy them all I'm gonna clear the shelf but is that the right thing to do well let's take a look at the keep a graph for the last three months let's get rid of Amazon's price marketplace new price new price whoa in the last three months this item sold twice in the last three months before I was willing to just completely clear the shelf, if there was like 50 of them on the shelf, I would have taken every single one of them. It was in the top 1% of the sales rank, and it's it, I would have bought them all. But no, let's take a look at the last week. Just yesterday, this item sold, and it jumped to that sales rank. Before, it was a much higher sales rank, and let's take a look at the last month and the last three months. The last three months, it sold just this one time, and this time before. Let's take a look at the year before that. So in the last year, it sold one time, two, three, four, five, 
6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 times a year. So that's like once a month, but that includes Q4. This, this right here, this section here, is, is Q4. So there's a lot more sales right there, but most of the time it sells so slowly. So if I had bought 50 of them, I'm sorry, it would take a really, it would take like four years before I would be able to sell all of them. So even if a sales rank is, is in the top 1% of a category, it could still be deceptive. It's always good to look at Camel, 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 and Keepa because just one sale jumped that sales rank to, to look really good when it really wasn't. So I would pass on this item. This is the Nordic Wear Seasonal Collection Conversation Heart Pan. You want to make your own conversation hearts like on Valentine's Day. So this is something to, you know, this is like a seasonal item. You know, we did a whole module on seasonal items. And so let's see if this item reacts seasonally. Looks like Amazon's in stock. And um, let's just clear this up a little bit. So Amazon's been in stock since before February and has not gone out of stock at, at all. And the sales rank for this item before Valentine's Day selling a lot very quickly. That makes a lot of sense. Since Valentine's Day, it's kind of slowed down. You know, since Valentine's Day, it looks like there was one sale, two, three, four, five, six, seven sales since Valentine's Day. So it's it's a very slow seller. So this might be something you might consider selling right before Valentine's Day. And so if Valentine's Day is approaching, you might be like, hey, I'll just go ahead and buy this and hold on to it. But here's the deal. Amazon has not been out of stock on this. The third-party new prices are about $12.39. Um, and so, you know, unless you can get this for maybe a dollar, two dollars, three dollars, then I probably would pass on this. Most likely something like this, if you're sourcing wholesale or if you're at Walmart, looking through the clearance section, they're probably still gonna be charging seven or eight dollars for something like this. So unless there was enough ROI that would be worth waiting for the sale to come in, then you know I would probably pass on this item, would not purchase this item. All right, let's take a look at this little toy. Now imagine you can buy this toy for $10. You're at a store, you can buy this for $10 and you see, oh my goodness, the lowest new price is $129.99. I, I just found this in the store for $10, this is the jackpot, I'm gonna buy them all. Let's see if that's a wise decision or not. And this time let's take a look at Camel. We've been looking at Keepa for the first couple examples, let's take a look at Camel. And Camel the last three months is showing us information that yes, it's the price has hovered in the last three months between $130 and about $52. So even at this lower price for the last three months, if you can get this for $10, the ROI, is still great. Let's take a look at the sales rank on this. We're gonna open up a new tab, go to Camel, 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 take a look at sales rank for the last three months. And we can even count the sales for the last three months. Let's count them, shall we? So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. This might be two sales, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, no, 34. So 34 sales in three months, you know, about 11 sales a month. So it's, uh, it's not super fast turnover, but it is something that, um, that does sell. You know, so if you're able to find maybe one of these, maybe five of these, I would purchase those. But I wouldn't go deep. I wouldn't be like if I'm sourcing wholesale or if I see like 40 of them on the shelf at Walmart, I might not buy them all. Because I want to make sure that my, the money that I have set aside for inventory is going to be put in items that sell quickly. And I don't want to put it all into one item. Uh, so I want to make sure it's spread out. So we can take a look at Keepa also and see some similar information. Um, 
with the pricing and the sales rank. So again, I'd probably buy maybe five or six of these, seven of these. Um, I wouldn't go any deeper than maybe 10 or so. Let's look at this board game, Trivial Pursuit, totally 80s. Um, this is actually a fun little game. Um, say you're at a garage sale, you can get this for 10 bucks. 10 bucks at a garage sale, and you're like, I'll give you $8. I'm like, nope, $10, it's the first day, I'm not going down. And you're like, dang it. So, the guy won't you know, budge on his price, he's holding it high, high at $10. Um, so you're like, you know, this is brand new, still sealed, and you can get it for $10. Now, if you can sell it for 40 bucks, yeah, definitely. So let's take a look at Keepa, and we can kind of look and see the sales rank and the price. We can also take a look at Camel and look at the sales price there. We can see that it is, um, has been a pretty consistent price most of the time for the last three months. Take a look at it on Camel, Camel, Camel. Look at the last three months. Plenty of sales the last three months. The price has held pretty consistent over the last three months. So this looks like a, re a really good item. Amazon's not in stock and is not a competitor. But overall, I think this is something that would sell quickly and would be something that would work really well. So hopefully you've been able to notice I've been able to go back and forth between Keepa and Camel. Usually when I'm uh, doing online arbitrage, I usually use Keepa more often than Camel. But when I'm doing retail arbitrage, I use Camel more than Keepa. And it, that's just kind of a personal preference. You're going to find what works best for you, what's your personal preference, what, what you're more comfortable with, what you're able to read the fastest, what, you're, what you become uh, used to. And you're going to be able to make smarter sourcing decisions with that. The thing I love about Camel and Keepa they both gather their data differently, and so you're able to get, you know, one opinion from one source and a second opinion from another source, and you can put that information together to make the most well-rounded uh, decision that you need. You gotta be able to have all the information in front of you to use what happened in the past to predict what you think is going to happen in the future. So that's it for this video. I hope it's been helpful. I hope you've been able to see it. Uh, some people might need to watch it through again because I kind of do talk through things really quickly and kind of jump from one thing to the next. But if you want to watch it again, go ahead and do that. Just know that the more you put this into action, the more you put it into practice, then the easier it will be and the faster you will be able to do this yourself. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you're curious about anything we've talked about, you can scroll down below, find the links in the description, like this, leave a comment. I want to hear what you have to say. And if you want to learn more about turning part-time hours into a full-time income, come hang out with us at fulltimefba.com. Have a great day.